Good morning, Discovery Church. My name's Todd. Uh, my wife, Stephanie, and I are the lead pastors of City Life Church in Vancouver, BC, which you can see behind me. I am right downtown where all the action is, which means you might hear a siren or two during this. We're just going to flow with it because that's what life is like here. Uh, four and a half years ago, Stephanie and I planted uh, City Life Church, and it has been such a journey and such a joy, such an adventure, and even a challenge at times. And through that journey, we got to know your pastors, Pastors Lauren and Shauna Lee. And more than just know them as sort of like friends who see each other at parties, but people who we've really come to love and respect and journey through life with. We've cried with these people. We've laughed together. We've shared meals. We've prayed earnestly together. We do life together. They are real friends to us. And we have such deep respect and love for them. I hope you feel the same way about your pastors. They are exceptional people. And we're so proud to journey with them through this season. One of the most challenging seasons, certainly, of ministry for me personally. And to watch their integrity, their resilience, their heart for Jesus, their love for people continue to grow and, and be expressed in different and unique ways. Shana Lee, uh, Lauren, we know you guys are probably on a vacation somewhere, which is why we're here today. And we bless you and we love you. And we're so thankful for your friendship. And we're thankful for this opportunity too. I'm thankful to speak to you today. You know, this has been a challenging season for all of us, hasn't it? I, I heard someone say recently that we've all been through the same storm, but in very different boats. We can all resonate with shared experiences, but all of us have walked through this last year and a half with different scars, with different hurts, with different wins, with different successes. And my question for you today is this, simply, Discovery Church, where do we go from here? Thank God for his word that gives us direction. There's a church 2,000 years ago, just like yours, just like mine, in this little Roman city called Philippi. Paul wrote a letter to this church. This letter is one of his most joyful letters. It's full of love and affection for the people who are following Jesus there. And he speaks to them and he challenges and encourages them as a friend, as a father, as somebody who isn't just speaking truth, but is connecting with the heart of the people there. There's a relationship there that allows him to speak these words. So where do we go from here? Let's look at what Paul says to this church in Philippians chapter 3, starting in verse 12. He says this, Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own. Why? Because Jesus Christ has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way, and if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have obtained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. God, as we spend these next few minutes together, I pray for every person that calls Discovery Church home, that maybe has stumbled through their virtual doors this morning, that's trolling YouTube after the fact and stumbles onto this. God, you have a plan and a purpose for their life. And I speak to their hearts today. And I pray, God, that this thought from Paul, inspired by God's spirit, thousands of years ago, would resonate with us in this moment and lead us forward in what you have called us to be and to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's dig into this passage together. Starting again in verse 12, Paul says, not that I've already obtained this or I'm already perfect, but I press on to make it my own. I love this. And I just want to start here. Aren't you glad that Paul here can freely admit he's not perfect? He's not done yet. He's not the roast Christmas turkey just coming out of the oven, fully complete and ready to consume. God's still working in Paul's life. 
Can I tell you, God's still working in my life, in my wife's life, although she's a little further along than I am. <laughs> God's working in your pastors. God's working in you, in your family. You don't have to be a finished product to be so unconditionally loved and used by God. And that's what Paul is saying here. He's saying, listen, I'm running after knowing God and being found in him fully, but I'm not quite there yet, but I'm pressing on to make it my own. Why? Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. He goes on and he says, brothers, he uses this term of affection, this familial term. I do not consider that I have made, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind. And I want to stop there and camp on there and see what Paul is trying to get us to see when he says to forget what's behind. You know, I think that for all of us in this season, there are some things we need to forget. Earlier in this chapter, Paul goes through this long list of all of his successes, all of his accolades, all of his achievements, the things that qualified him to do things in a secular sense and in, in a natural sense and be found as a person of success, the things he found his identity in. For us, I think today it's easy for all of us to create our sense of identity around our own success, around our own education, our privilege. And maybe you've done that just, just like Paul. Maybe in this season, you've really focused in on some of the natural things of your life. And maybe if I can suggest, we've become overly fixated on some of those things. At the heart of what Paul is saying here that he needs to forget is all those things that used to identify him, that defined him, that made him feel like he, his life was on trajectory. Because when he met Jesus, all those things were counted as loss. See, all of us want to be smarter. We all want to be holier. We all want to be wealthier or handsomer. But the truth is, is that unless we build all of our successes on the person of Jesus Christ, we are doomed to not live the life God has intended for us. We need to forget some things. At the root of this is pride. Paul's saying, I'm letting go of that pride. I'm, I need to forget those things and not define myself by them. Not only are there things we need to forget, there's some things we wanna forget. You know, Paul had a conscience in him, a memory of some pretty horrific things previous to his role as an apostle, a leader in the early church. Paul was a persecutor of the early church. God met him and arrested his heart and changed him and saved him beautifully. It's an amazing story in the book of Acts. But in this moment, Paul could look back and say, man, I got a lot of regrets. I've hurt a lot of people. I've done some horrific things and nothing can take that away. You know, for you today, maybe you're sitting in your home and there's some things you've done that still whisper in the back of your head, things that try to shame you and condemn you, things that pull you into your past. Maybe there's some things that have been done to you, moments that you should have experienced love by close friends and family, and instead you hurt, you experienced hurt and abuse and loss. Can I tell you today, my friends, Discovery Church, that God does not look at those things and count you hostage to them anymore. You can let go. There are some things we want to forget, and there are some things we can let go of. See, at the heart of what we want to forget is forgiveness. And church, today, I want to give you permission to forget what lies behind. This has been an incredibly challenging year and a half. You know, with our COVID realities, this has been one of the hardest seasons for the church. As I read emerging data, uh, uh, a meet with Jesus followers from our church, there's a consistent theme of people expressing a deep sense of disconnect, of passivity, of fatigue, and in their faith, in their relationship with Jesus and their connection to their churches. Maybe you can relate to that. Maybe there's some things about this past year that you need to forget as it relates to your relationship with Jesus. Maybe some things that have settled in that you want to forget. Let me give you permission today. Paul is giving us permission today. He says, one thing I do, I'm forgetting what lies behind. 
If you become overly fixated or focused on your career and your hobbies and your ambitions and your desires, none of those things are wrong in and of themselves. But if you try to bring a sense of identity in those things and not your relationship with Jesus, would you feel God pulling you into that invitation today to leave some of those things behind, to count them as loss for the sake of knowing Jesus? Are there some things you want to forget? Maybe there's some toxic cycles of thinking and, and behaving. Maybe this past season has declared war on your mental health, your spiritual convictions, your habits. See, forgetting what lies behind gives us permission to do what's next here. He says, and straining forward to what lies ahead. I think this is funny because he actually says, one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. He, he actually is talking about two things. He says one thing, but he's actually listing two things. And I think it's because really they're one and the same. We can't just forget about the past, what lies behind, the failures, the successes, the wins and the losses without giving ourselves a new vantage point, something else to fixate our thoughts, our focus, our ambition, and our direction on. Paul is saying here, this one thing is the Christian life. And the Christian life requires a forward focus. To forget the past, we need a forward focus. I want to give you permission to shift gears right now, even in the spirit, from the past to the future. I want to give you permission because Paul's giving us permission. Christ through Paul is giving you permission today to forget what's been and to move forward to what could be. I want to remind you today that you have a purpose, that you have a plan, you have a reason for being. You don't just exist for yourself. Paul says in this, one thing I do, I forget what lies behind and I strain forward to what lies ahead, to what's ahead. That strain, it speaks of opposition, it speaks of tension, and maybe you felt some of that in this past season. I think strain, is a good word to express the challenges that we've all faced. But let me invite you today, let's choose to look forward together. Let's choose to refocus around Jesus' mission for you and your family and your future, but also for us as a church, as Discovery Church, as the church, part of that global movement that's bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth. It's my theory, and it's just a theory, that post pandemic church is not going to look the same as when the church entered this season. And I don't think that's bad. I think God's actually in it. I think God's actually doing something to bring a reformation. The structures are going to change, but the substance is going to remain the same. We need to embrace new strategies and new structures that will better bring God's heart into our experience and also translate that through to others. Paul goes on and he says, I press on that strain again, that opposition, but he's going to press through. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. See, first he says, I want to help you forget what's behind. Secondly, I want you to strain forward to see what's ahead. But third, I want you to see what's earthly through the lens of what's eternal. You don't know this, but I'm wearing contact lenses right now. I have horrible vision. In fact, if, if we pop these contacts out, I couldn't see this cheat screen just hiding below the camera. Yeah, we can just all acknowledge it's there. I, I, I wouldn't be able to even see barely th that, I, that this was a camera in front of me. My vision is awful. But there's a little lens that you can't even see between me and you right now, that's totally altering my perspective. See, the lens we see reality through determines how we understand what's happening. And here, Paul is inviting this church in Philippi to see through the right lens. He's saying, I want you to see your earthly life, the challenges you faced, the losses you've experienced, the hardship that you've endured. I want you to see it through the lens of eternity. 
I don't want you to live a passive life. Paul's not giving them permission here to just hold on until they get to eternity. He's saying, no, let the eternal reality of heaven and relationship with God face to face fuel you to live a passionate, purposeful life today. It gave them then and it gives us now this ability to see through the lens of what's eternal. It gives us the ability to surrender the things we need to forget, if, to find freedom from the things we want to forget, and to find and to see what's earthly through the lens of what's eternal picture. The picture Paul gives us here is that of a runner. He, he's using the idea of an athlete with their eyes on the finish line, straining forward, looking ahead. I, I'm not much of a runner, but there've been times and seasons in my life where I have ran. And I got to tell you, it's not easy. It's a discipline. It's challenging at times. It's also invigorating and exciting at times. There's endorphins that are released and, and there's moments of great highs and moments of great lows. But if I get my eye distracted from the finish line, I'm going to miss out on what's ahead of me. My son, Ezra, years ago, I was teaching him to ride a bike and he just couldn't get it. He struggled time and time again. And finally, I looked at what and how he was looking out from his perspective. And I saw him grab his handlebars and start to pedal, but he was looking almost straight down, just literally a foot or two in front of him. And I said, son, you've got to lift your eyes up. You've got to look a little further because if you fixate on what's right in front of you, you're going to get all wobbly. But if you fixate just a little further, if you look beyond, you're going to see that those handlebars get stabilized and you're going to point towards something with clarity. You're going to shoot toward the mark and you're going to hit it and achieve it. Well, it wasn't long after that Ezra got his stride and he rode that bike around that little campground. I still have this great video of it in my mind and on my phone of Ezra having his first ride. Why? Because he changed his perspective. He saw the lens of what was immediate through the lens of what was a little further away. His perspective was adjusted. Let me encourage you to adjust your perspective today. You might be walking through some really, really dark days. But would you see those through the lens of what's eternal? There are better days coming. Let me speak it to you in faith today from Shauna Lee to Lauren to every person that calls Discovery Church home. I want to speak better days coming. God has good plans for his church. He has not forgotten us. He has not abandoned us. Oh, we might have got a little beat up. We might be struggling a little bit. I don't know what it's like over there, but that's what it feels like over here in Vancouver. But I believe God's got a plan for his church that would take our breath away. Come on, somebody. Let's see our lives, what's earthly, through the lens of what's eternal. Paul finishes up here and says, let all of us who are mature think this way, which I just love because he basically says, listen, if you think otherwise, you're immature, you're a child in your thinking. <laughs> and if in anything you think otherwise, he says, God will reveal that to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. See, I think the last thing Paul wants us to do in this passage is to rediscover the strength of what's family. Here he says, imitate me and imitate those who walk according to the example you have in us. Paul concludes his, his thinking, his thought here in this letter by doing something really important, in fact, critical to the excess, success of all of Jesus' followers. He says, look around you and find those who are living a vibrant, overflowing Christian life. Watch them, examine them, learn from them, and pattern your life from them. Jesus' pattern to develop that kind of maturity we see in, in the accounts of his life was to walk with people in relationship. And ours is too. You know, I wanna to say to you today, you need each other. We need each other. In our local churches, we need each other. We cannot do this alone. That's been tested in this past season. We cannot walk this path alone. 
Now, I know you're all in different rooms, in your living rooms and kitchens. Some of you are driving and listening to this after it was live streamed to your church. Wherever you're at this moment, I want you to take a mental moment and look around you. I want you to think about the people who call Discovery Church home. I want you to think about your family, your spiritual family. I want to invite you into a space and place where you allow your strength to bring encouragement to them and their strength to bring encouragement to you. See, I believe the strength and encouragement we need is literally sitting in this church with you, is sitting in my church with me. People who are seasoned, devoted, mature Jesus followers. We need you in this community. We need you in your community. We need you to encourage and strengthen and lead to speak life. Those of you who are newer to the life of faith, reach out, ask for help, find someone you can ask for mentorship and encouragement from. A couple weeks ago, I got to lead a couple in our church in their marriage vows. And there's this beautiful passage that doesn't often get preached when it comes to weddings in Romans, where Paul says, basically, he says, listen, if you need encouragement, go to the community of faith. If you, need, uh, if you need endurance, find it in the spirit of God. You know, there's some things we can only go to God for. That endurance, that strength that we need. We've got to find that and break into that place of grace and faith. In worship, in prayer, in seeking Jesus. But we need each other for encouragement. Uh, the best picture of encouragement that someone gave me once was the idea of a syringe filled with the courage of someone else's heart injected into my arm when I am weak. I can't sustain that in myself. I need someone else to do that for me. And that's really what Paul is trying to communicate to this church and what I would communicate, what God's put in my heart for you to share today. Where do we go from here? The answer Paul gives us is forward. We go forward and he gives us four things, four ways we can do that. First of all, we need to forget what's behind. There's some things we need to forget. There's some things we want to forget. God wants to deal with those in your heart today. We need to strain forward to what's ahead. We need to see and re-engage with the purpose, with the design and destiny of our own hearts and souls. We need to see what's earthly through the lens of what's eternal. And lastly, we need to discover and rediscover the strength of what's family. I don't know where you're at today. I don't know which piece in this passage really connects with your heart, but the Holy Spirit does. God does. And wherever you're seated today, I want to invite you just to close your eyes for a moment and take a second and evaluate yourself. Allow the Holy Spirit even. Don't evaluate yourself. That's bad counsel. Just take a moment and say, Holy Spirit, in this moment... What is it that you want to speak into my heart? Maybe there are some things you need to forget. Maybe you've got your eyes off that forward picture. Maybe the strain of this season has caused you to sit back and become passive and disconnected. God's inviting you back into the race. Yeah, there are some tension moments. There are some press moments, but there are breathtaking, invigorating, joyful moments that far eclipse the challenge. Maybe you need to remind yourself again to see what's earthly through the lens of eternal. And I think all of us in this season of disconnect need to especially rediscover the strength of what's family. God, I pray for Discovery Church today. I thank you for their future. I thank you that you are inviting them this morning by putting this passage in my heart to move forward, to find you in a new way, to see your spirit and grace breathe into their hearts, the dry places of their souls, and lead them into a fuller, further, joy-filled picture of their future. God, give them the lens to see what's ahead and let them have the courage to press into those days. Amen. Amen. I bless you today. Thank you so much for the privilege of speaking to your church, Pastors Lauren and Shauna Lee. I bless you, Discovery Church. Thanks, Pastor.